Grace and peace. I'm Brian Musser, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power Christian Fellowship, the peace of Jesus Christ to change your life, the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world. And we are continuing our series on the discipleship experience, using the spiritual disciplines to transform all of who we are into the image of Jesus. This is lesson five, and we're talking about feeling love for God. We're talking about the soul. This is the third lesson of, I mean, the third video of this lesson, we're going to be dealing with silence. And as we're moving forward, and you probably have picked up on this theme, but the first video is going to deal with that part of the body, whether it's the heart, mind, soul, strength, or neighbors. The second video will deal with an active spiritual discipline, something we can do that directly helps us build that strength. So the spiritual discipline of celebration helps us love the Lord our God with all of our soul. The third video, the last video of the week, will, will be a spiritual discipline that helps us not overcompensate with that one. So when we're talking about the heart or the will, the first one was submission. The second one was Sabbath. How Doing nothing actually helps us not become stubborn or strong-willed. How, in the second one, the mind, study engaged the mind and helped us learn to love God with all of our mind. But meditation pulled back and helped us not to be intellectually arrogant and just to accept God's word as it is and meditate and hold it in our head for an extended period of time. This week's celebration was the active discipline, and we showed how celebrating what God has done for us can bring us great joy. But there is a danger in that, and that danger is will completely associate joy with God's presence. And question if we're not joyful, are we even in connection with God, or we will just be loud and obnoxious and think that because we are partying, because we are celebrating, because we are worshiping, that then we must be in good standing with God. We will fill our words, uh, I mean, our world up with words in such a way that we don't even know if God is there or not. We'll substitute God's presence for our words about God's presence. And this is where silence comes in. Silence in a couple situations, silence before God, silence before others. Even when you are not talking, do you have a running conversation going on inside your mind? If yes, what is the content of that conversation? Just drop down in the comments below and just give me some ideas of what happens in your head. I am always talking, I, I guess it's to myself, it might be to God, it might to be to this imaginary figure where I'm trying to explain to them what I am doing in my life. Sometimes I have that justifying conversation in my head, trying to let people know why I'm choosing to do exactly what I'm doing in that moment. Many people have this. We need to silence that as well, or silence helps us practice that. And as I'm justifying myself, there's a whole emotional piece wrapped up in that. I'm not able to just freely be here. I have to, in some way, plead my case, even if it is just to myself, that I should be here. One reason we can hardly bear to remain silent is that we makes us feel so helpless. We are so accustomed to relying upon words to manage and control others. Silence is intimately related to trust. Silence is one of the deepest disciplines of the spirit simply because it puts a stop on all of our self-justification. Or a life without a lonely place, that is a life without a quiet corner, easily becomes destructive. When we cling to the results of our actions as our only way 
of self-identification, then we become possessive and defensive and tend to look at our fellow human beings more as enemies to be kept at a distance than as friends with whom we share the gifts of life. Silence helps us be okay in the moment without having to reason and justify our very existence, either before others or before God. Silence helps us just live in the okay emotion of just being without fear, without despair, without worry that we need to compete and justify ourselves against others. Silence creates a soul that can actually love God. Silence and scriptures. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Ecclesiastes 5.2, be not rash with your mouth, nor let your heart be hasty to utter a word before God, for God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. God doesn't need you. Your, your worship, your words, what we try to change the world with more than anything else, God doesn't need those. God doesn't need you to praise and worship him. It's good. It helps you relate. It's actually admitting the truth. Worship and celebration is an awesome thing, but God doesn't need it. We can be still, and God is still going to get his glory. Be not arrogant with our words, thinking that our words are more important than what they are. Do you ever feel like you need to talk God into accepting you? Now, we would all, those of us who follow Christ, will probably all say, no, we don't need to. But do we feel like it? Has what we know theologically in our mind actually been inputted into our heart? Silence might be a good way to start moving some theological truths from the mind to the soul. Silence and scriptures. Again, Isaiah 53, 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Jesus in silence. And the high priest stood up and said, "Have you no answer to make? What is it that these what is it that these men testify against you?" But Jesus remained silent. And the high priest said to him, "I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God." Jesus said to him, "You have said so, but I tell you from now on, you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven." Jesus in silence before Pilate. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Why was Jesus silent when facing these officials? How does being falsely accused make you feel? Do you still have an ongoing imaginary conversations in your head about a time when you felt falsely accused? Jesus was able to be silent while being accused. That's huge. Because he did not, he, he knew, he had faith, he had knowledge that it was going to be okay. He did not have to justify himself before these people because he was already safely secured in the hand of the Father.
Let's experiment with doing deeds without any words of explanation, whatever. We note our sense of fear that people will misunderstand why we have done what we've done. We seek to allow God to be our justifier. We could be nice, be kind, love others without having to justify those results, without having to defend them. This is kind of a, a, a quote from a student. It's coming from Dallas Willard's The Spirit of Discipline about a student practicing this idea of silence and solitude. I want you to hear this and hear the place he's coming from. The more I practice this discipline, the more I appreciate the strength of silence. The less I become skeptical and judgmental. The more I learn to accept the things I didn't like about others. The more I accept them as uniquely created in the image of God. The less I talk, the fuller are words spoken at an appropriate time. The more I value others, the more I serve them in small ways, the more I enjoy and celebrate my life. The more I celebrate, the more I realize God has been giving me wonderful things in my life. The less I worry about my future, I will accept and enjoy what God is continuously giving me. I think I am beginning to really enjoy God. It's interesting to see in this quote how this idea of silence, not having to justify ourselves before God or others, that we can just accept the world as it is, has really impacted his emotional well-being so that he can experience joy and celebrate God. Going back to the previous um, video, the previous discipline, celebrate God in a strong and powerful way. Silence. It's the spiritual discipline that allows us not to be overcome with our words and how we feel about God. It gives us space to feel love for God instead of just space to talk about how we should be feeling love for God. As always, we'll, we'll look at homework. Celebrate a good thing in your life. Throw a random party and let God be part of it. Second one, spend a day counting to five every time before you speak. Again, continue to practice one specific spiritual discipline every day this week to try to form that discipline as a habit. Continuing to look forward, next week we'll talk about strength, um, our bodies, our physical actions, how we use force or energy to make a difference or an impact in the world. Um, and then our neighbors is coming up and then how we put this all together as a whole entire person. As always, there are three ways to join. In-person Sunday nights at a new time, which is five. Live Monday night, 7 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, that link will be in the description below. These weekly wrap-ups on YouTube and WordPress. I'm all over the social media, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, WordPress, and YouTube. Those links are in the discussion. I mean, in the description below. I really enjoyed having this conversation with you. And I do understand the irony of having an extended, you know, 12-minute conversation about silence. Um, the irony does not. Um, I don't miss the irony there, but yeah, enjoyed having this conversation. Hopefully it continues real soon.